Don't you just love dashboards? Well, I know I do. And so a few months ago, I created a video showing you how to build a dashboard web application in Python using the Streamlit library. And so today I'm going to create version two of the dashboard where there will be some visual aesthetic improvements. And I'll show you how to do that. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So a few weeks ago, I tweeted that I was working on a version two of the dashboard. And this was the preliminary version that I tweeted. And some of the improvements include using this drop shadow on the st.metric card, which is an adjustment or slight improvement to the prior one built in version one, as described in this particular video in how to build a dashboard web app in Python. And as you can see in this app that I'm going to show you today, we've also added some input parameters parameters that you could customize and you could make direct adjustment to the plot that is displayed in the dashboard. So let's have a look at the dashboard app here. So you're going to see that there's a sidebar that you could hide or show, which is found here. And if it's hidden, you'll notice that the app will expand to fit the entire width of the web browser. And as you scroll down, you can see the entire dashboard. And if you open up the sidebar, you'll also see the input widgets here. For example, in the heat map parameter, you're able to adjust the color by option, which is here. By default, it is colored by temp min, and you could change that to temp max, which is the maximal temperature, and the default was the minimal temperature. Here in the donut chart parameter, you could adjust the data here, which is displayed. So by default, Q2 is displayed, and you could change it to Q3, okay, like here. And you'll notice that the color here, the margin color here to the left for all of the ST metrics card was customized using a CSS hack, and the color here was suggested by Charlie, an SEO wizard, and also a data science fanatic. So if you haven't already followed him on Twitter, you can go ahead and find him with his Twitter handle, Data Chaz. So he suggested that I also change the default streamlit color from the typical red to the teal color here, which is to match the one in the ST metrics card here, which I think looks really nice. And so let's have a look at how you could adjust the parameters for the line chart here. So by default, both are displayed. If I take out 10 max, you only see the 10 min. Okay, and if they're all gone, then an error displays. Well, we, we could also have an accept syntax in order to avoid that as well. So I'll leave that up to you for improving the app further. And so here you could adjust the height of the chart to be tall or or short up to your own desire. All right, and so let's dive into the code. So currently it's set as private, so I'm going to make it public at the release of this particular video. So let's have a look at the contents of the repo here. And so this particular dashboard app here was generated using the Streamlit App Starter Kit. And I'll link to the full blog post, which will show you how to use this. So let's have a look here. So the App Starter Kit will generate essentially all of the files that you'll see here. So there are going to be a folder called .streamlit, which contains the configuration file. And the configuration file has the colors for the Streamlit app. So by default, this was the color for the various widgets, which is the red color of Streamlit. And I've changed it to this color, which is the teal color that you've seen here, right here, to match the ST metric card. And so you could also feel free to play around with the other elements here as well, the fonts and the color. Readme is this particular document. You could also expand this if you like write some more details about the dashboard app that you're going to create. And here we're not installing any specific Ubuntu packages in Linux. So we're going to skip this. But if you would like to install anything on Linux, then you could populate that here. And in the requirements.txt, let's have a look. You'll notice that we'll have Streamlit, Pandas, and also the Plost library, which allows you to quickly create nice looking plots in a simplified manner, which will be used in the app here, as shown here in the donut chart and also in the heat map. And the line chart here was created using the default built-in streamlit line chart command. Let's head over back. And then we have the streamlit app.py and we have the CSS styles here. So all of the shadow that you see, 
the left margin color that you see was actually modified using the CSS hack. Even the Streamlit logo here was also modified in this particular file. So I'll go over that in just a moment. So I'll take you through this streamlitapp.py file. Let's have a look. So there's about 63 lines of code. So I'm going to open this side by side and I'm going to increase the font here. All right. So you're going to see that the dashboard expands to the width of the page. And this is because of line number five, where we've set it here in st.setPageConfig and the layout is wide. And then we also said that we wanted the sidebar to be expanded. So by default, whenever you load up the app, you're going to see the sidebar expanded. So let's go back to the first three lines, which is to import the necessary libraries that we're using here, which includes Streamlit, Pandas, and the Plaz plot library. On line number seven and eight, we're importing the style.css, which contains the CSS hack that I previously mentioned, and I'll go through that in just a moment. Line number 10 here will be creating a header on the sidebar, which is right here, the header here and it's written as dashboard version two. And you're gonna notice that the text here has some green color and a slight white background. And it's because of using the tick here to highlight this particular text. Line number 12 here, we're gonna use st.sidebar.subheader and we're specifying heat map parameter, which is right here. And then we're going to have a widget, which is a select box that allows you to color by minimal temperature. And you can select the color here. And then on lines 15, we're going to print out the donut chart parameter here on the sidebar. And then we allow the user to select the particular data that should be displayed here on the donut chart, which is here on line number 16. And we're going to assign that to the donut data variable. And this is done using the select box widget. Line number 18, we're going to have line chart parameters printed out here in the sidebar. And then we're going to have two input widgets. The first one allowing the user to select the data right here, select both of them or select one of them. So it is a multi-select widget, which is here on line number 19 and 20. Number 19 will be using multi-select widget and we're assigning that to plot data. And line number 20 will be using the slider widget, which is here. And the user could slide the value and the height of the plot will be adjusted. And then we specify that as plot height variable, which we're going to call in here. Let me find it. Time his color, which was defined on top here, right here. Time his color on line number 13. And then we have donut data, which was fine here on line number 16. Here we have in the line chart, the plot data and the plot height, which is assigned to the height option and also the Y option here in the input parameters of line chart. Here, the two variables, which was the input widgets here. And finally, we have a markdown command to print out the created with love by data professor right here at the bottom. And we're creating that using the markdown and we're using the three dash symbol here to create a line rule here, which will act as a visual separation between the input parameter widgets and the markdown text here. And there you have it. This is the first part of the app. First 20 lines here are for the inputs parameter widgets on the sidebar. And here I've commented that the blocks of code here for row A, which is the first row here for the metrics. And in row B, we have the heat map and the donut chart. And then in row C, we have the line chart. Let's have a look at row A, which is the metrics. So here we're using on line number 29, st.markdown to create the metrics subheader here, or you could also use the subheader command or the header command. Really depends on your preference. I like to specify the exact size of the text. So I'll use the three hash symbol here in markdown. And then in order to create the three metrics SD card in three columns, we're going to create three variables called code one, code two, and code three, which is assigned by the st.columns command. And we specify the number three here because we want to create three columns. And then in code one and code two and code three, we specify dot metric. And then we specify the input parameters, which corresponds to the temperature here to the 70 degree Fahrenheit. And also that there's an increase of 1.2. 
And likewise, we're doing in a similar fashion for wind hu and also humidity. And this is for row A for metrics. And let's have a look for row B. So here we're going to import the toy data set called Seattle weather and the stocks data. And this was obtained both from the PLOS library that Tiago, one of the co-founders of Streamlit, has created. And let's have a look at here. We're going to create two columns using st.columns. And we're going to specify that the first column will occupy about 70% of the page width and the second column will occupy about 30% of the page width. So you can see that the first column is wider than the second column at a ratio of 7 to 3. And then for the first column in C1, we're going to use the st.markdown to specify the header here and st.markdown donut chart to specify the header here. And then inside the width statement under here, we're going to use the plus time hiss function or command in order to create the heat map that you see here. And for donut chart, we're going to use the one from plus as well which is plus.donutchart, and this is what we get. As input parameters, we're going to use the Seattle weather data for the heat map here. And then we're going to specify that we want the date column, and the week column, and the day column, which is from the data here, Seattle weather. So let me show you. Copy, paste, and this is the data. So we have the date column. We actually have the precipitation column, but we didn't use it here. But if you would like to play around with that, feel free to do so. We also have the maximal temperature, the minimal temperature, the wind and also the weather yeah so you could also play with this as well if you like all right and the stocks data was used for the donut charts and here the color is according to the company so have a look at the data here so it's a very simple hypothetical data so we have the company in the first column and we have quarter two and quarter three in the second and third column and we have some arbitrary numbers there and this is what you see and then finally, in row C, which is the last column here, we're creating a line chart and we're using st.markdown to create this header. And we're using the built in st.line chart to create the line chart here. And the input data is the Seattle weather data set. And the X and Y will be the date column. And the Y here will be the plot data, which is the Input widget on line number 19, which allows you to select the data here, temp max or temp min or both. And the height is specified by the widget here, the slider, which allows you to specify the height of the plot. And there you have it. In only 63 lines of code, you could create this nice looking dashboard web app in native Python using the Streamlit library. And you could also play around with all of the various data visualization libraries like matplotlib, Altair, Plost, the one that's used here, Plotly, and there's so much more. You could also embed data from CSV files. You could also retrieve data from APIs. So the app is highly customizable. And I hope that you find this particular dashboard app as sort of a template that you could build upon. And I'd love to see what you are making out of this. Congratulations, you've built your dashboard in Python using Streamlit. And if you've reached this far, please drop a fire emoji so that I know that you're the real one. And also smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and also turn on notifications so that you'll be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.